Another point that Manchi Bureau made was really the, actually the deciding factor. The conservatives and the reformed were going to Congress and going to the New York State Legislature and saying that the Jewish opinion is that you are allowed to have abortions. This is a principle of Judaism. Now, that's a falsification of what Torah is. And that's something we have to defend. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. In the next couple of weeks, we are going to be continuing with the program on the shoulders of giants. We're going to have episodes on the issues of conservative and reform, how Agudas Yisrael spread nationwide, and so much more. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about the issues of abortion, and why is it such a major thing that Roe v. Wade was overturned? Just to understand the numbers, since 1973, when Roe v. Wade went into effect, over 60 million babies in the United States were aborted. In the year 2020, in the District of Columbia, over 50% of all pregnancies ended in abortion, which is just crazy to think about. Now that Roe v. Wade was overturned, it does not mean that it is illegal to have an abortion. What it means is, is that it is up to the states to make the law if abortion is illegal or not. There are places like Alabama and Kentucky that are planning on banning abortion completely, all the way to places like New Jersey and Alaska that they put no limit on abortion, meaning that if the baby isn't born yet, even up till nine months, you can have an abortion. So now the fight basically begins that uh, there's what to fight for because states can, in fact, put in laws to prevent people from having abortions. Is the Torah community happy to completely 100% ban abortions? The answer is no. There is an issue with that, and we will discuss that on today's episode. I'm Israel Yudkowsky. You are listening to Foundations Podcast. just to understand um, what the Torah has to say about abortions, when you're allowed to, when you're not allowed to. Uh, so maybe just tell us a little bit of halachos. I'm not going to go into the halachos things. That's It's a very complicated, serious, um, uh, it's obviously serious issue and also a very complicated issue. Generally, abortion is not permitted, according to Jewish law. Exceptions can be made definitely by this saving the life of the mother. When the mother's life is in danger, and I remember I was a meeting of the Yomertz Gleliater in the house of Ramesha Feinstein, and my Rebbe of Ruderman uh, numerous times in the course of the meeting said, is, yes, we agree in principle, generally, with the Catholic position on abortion, that abortion is, is illegal, and abortion, in, in some extent, is, is a type of murder, but there's a major difference. The Catholics do not permit it when the life of the mother is at risk. And that's a very serious danger. If the law would say, if the state would pass the law that under no circumstance can you have an abortion, that would be a major problem for, 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 for Jews. It would be a problem for, for, for Torah Jews and for Orthodox Jews. The, the Chazal very clearly say that, um, that when the mother's life is at risk, is that the abortion is not only permitted, but, but encouraged. And, and, and we want to have an abortion, and we want to have make sure that that is written into any law that, 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 that we support and that gets, goes into effect to make sure that, the, that when the mother's life is at risk, that the, the, that the baby should be able to, to, to be saved. There also is a more lenient position for the first 40 days after conception. The first 40 days after conception, the, uh, the quote is that it's Maya Ba'alma, it's not really, a ch- really a child. And there, although it's not generally permitted, but there can be exceptions. And under exceptional cases, it is up to 40 days, the halacha does find ways that, 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 that abortion can be proven, but only, obviously, with a reliable halachic expert uh, who understands the circumstances, under which circumstances we would permit it or not. Say, taking a step back, um, when, as, 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 as happy as we are, that the, the right to abortion, the right to do anything to my body that, I, that, 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 that a woman has, and even though there's a child living in that body, I have the right to, although we agree wholeheartedly that that was a, a, an incorrect law and an, for an extension on the constitutional basis, as something written into the Constitution that really didn't exist, 
is, but we want to be very, very careful that as we support the laws as they come through the states, um, that, the, that the exceptions that are permitted by Jewish law should be, should be allowed. Ben Shapiro, when he was on the Meaningful People podcast a few weeks ago, um, so he brought up also more in general, uh, but also more specifically about Roe v. Wade, is that he kind of like asked why wasn't the Orthodox Jewish community up front, you know, I'll go to Israel and other rabbanim, why weren't they out there in the public the past couple of months, especially when Roe v. Wade, you know, was in the discussion about possibly being overturned, why weren't they out there in the fight? Like it was mostly the Catholics that were fighting to overturn Roe v. Wade. He kind of was saying, where were the Jewish community when it comes to this fight? Like we're supposed to be a light, light onto the nations and like we were nowhere to be found. So here's uh, what Ben Shapiro said. Well, one of my yeah. big, you know, kind of complaints about the Jewish community is if, if you're supposed to be a light unto the nations, there are Jews who are significantly more knowledgeable about pretty much every aspect of Judaism than I am. Why am I the only one on TV wearing a kippah? Like it shouldn't be, that, that's not just my complaint, by the way. That's the complaint of Rabbi Blech, right? R- Rabbi Blech wrote a, a piece recently that I found incredibly compelling about Roe versus Wade and abortion. And he said, it's, it's a real shame, right? It's, it's an actual busha that, that the people who are out front on this stuff are Catholic, right? The people who are out front, like if you're supposed to be a light unto the nations, where are you on issues of the day that matter, not just to the Jewish community, but to the world at large? The Torah is very clear that if you're supposed to be a mamlech kohanim v'goykadosh, if you're supposed to be an example to the world, it, on, in, in one aspect, that means that you're supposed to you know, act in, in halachic ways with regard to your own family and provide a model. But the idea that you're just going to sit there and, and not engage with the world is completely counterintuitive. I mean, that, that, that is not what Judaism says in any way, shape, or form. And the sort of mentality that's been cultivated over several thousand years of oppression, that the best way to keep yourself safe is to sort of you know hunker down. I, I get it. I totally do. I mean, you want to protect your family. You want to protect your community. And maybe you think the best way to do that is to build very high walls. But the problem is those walls also keep you in and prevent you from performing the function that you really were put on earth to do. And that, that is a riskier proposition, no question, but it's also mm-hmm. a much richer proposition. What is your uh, response? Was he correct in this, uh, to say this? Ben Shapiro, actually, in, 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 this, in the, the clip that you just played, um, he actually says that it's based on a thousand years of protection of the Jewish community, that when we're living in a uh, secular society, you were living in a, among Gentiles. We're living in, in a world of general. The 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 rabbonim through the years have said that although we have to be a light unto the guy, as the way the light out to the world, as Ben Shapiro said, by living the type of life that we should be living, by being honest, by being moral, by doing the right things, by not having abortions, by not allowing abortions in, in our community, is the the to tell the Gentiles that we're in the countries that we're living in how they should live is something that is very dangerous. And the fact that we haven't been doing that for the most part for the last 2,000 years is one of the reasons that we're still here in 2,000 years, 2,000 years later, is that's the reason that we exist, because we had that defense, because we built up the wall. Obviously, you, there's a balance. You also want to be a light onto, uh, onto the guy. You want to be a light onto, onto, onto the nations of the world. That's part of your responsibility. And you have to protect yourself. So that balance, that question, is something that Daily Yisrael, in every generation, had opportunities to sit down and discuss. When do you... When do you go on this? What, what is the balance a little bit to this side? What is the balance a little bit to this side? And so it goes um, like each case and each, you know, when it comes to abortion or, you know, each scenario that comes up, they would need to discuss that particular situation to see like where exactly the correct line between putting up a guard and not getting involved, but also being a light onto the nations would be. So it goes kind of case by case. Right, and actually, we'll talk about this case particularly, in, but on this general rule, I became conceptually an agudist when I heard a speech from uh, Mike Tress, who was then the president of, of Agudis Yisrael, He's, I was a camper in Camp Monk, and they had a Malav Malka, and he came and he spoke. And he said, Agudis Yisrael is halacha. What does that mean? Is two women, at the time, would bring, would bring chickens to the rabbi, is to see if something's kosher. They see an imperfection in the chicken that they bought, uh, that the, that the, that the shoch has shechted, and they bring it to the rabbi, and they're sitting in the waiting room. And... One woman says to the other, well, let me see your chicken. Let me see it. And it looked almost the same. And one went into the rabbi, 
and brought a chicken, and he says, this is kosher. And the other one said, he looked at the chicken, and he said, this is not kosher. But it looked the same. But the rabbi who was learned it, who knew the halacha, and knew the metzias, he knew the way the, 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 the birds were, he knew that one was a little bit over the line, and it was kosher, and the other one was one under the line, and it wasn't kosher. Kosher, the, the halacha is not always oser. Halacha is not always mutter. But each case, their balance is the reason for each side. And you have to sit down, experts in halacha and, and responsible people for the community, in, in, in the types of issues that we're talking about, Roe Ro, Ro v. Wade, to sit down and to say to what extent we go public, to what extent we fight it, to what extent we, we, we keep our mouth shut, to with extent we go out and, and, and in front of the pack and, and do the lean. I was witness to a meeting of the Moetzik Torah in the house of Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Rabbi Rudeman, Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky, I think the Belushiva Rebbe uh, were there. And this issue came before them. This issue came, the question of finding abortion. Uh, was it before Ray or Ray? It might even have been before Ray or Ray Wade. I, don't know, it was, it was, I think it was New York State law that there that, that, that was the issue to, we, to what extent we, we fight it, to what extent Agurus Yisrael comes out, do we keep quiet about it, whatever happens. In this case, as I mentioned before, Rav Ruderman, numerous times, his main point was that if there is a law going through the legislature, we must make sure that the risk of a mother's life should be a, uh, an exception that, that, that when the mother's listening, because otherwise it would be almost impossible for us to live there. He says it would be difficult to live on, under those circumstances, a law that says that, that you have to let the mother die rather than save the child. But the, another point that Ben Shapura Biro made was really the, actually the deciding factor. The conservatives and the reformed were going to Congress and going to the New York State Legislature and saying that the Jewish opinion is that you are allowed to have abortions. On the contrary, the, the, uh, um, the president of the uh, lady societies of, of the reformed congregations got up in Congress and said that this is a principle of Judaism. Now that's a falsification of what there is. And that's something we have to defend. And we have to go out and say that that's not the Torah opinion. That's not the Jewish opinion. That the Jewish community, although unfortunately there are many Jews who are in the, in the leadership of those who are, who are fighting for abortions, is but the Torah and the Jewish tradition and the Jewish law is against abortion in most cases. And the decision at that time was, although not to go make major campaigns and have thousands of signatures and, and everything to work on to be in the front of the campaign, but to very clearly come out with statements that the Jewish Torah and the Jewish opinion, the Jewish halacha, is that an abortion under most circumstances is, is, is forbidden. And that has been the position of Agudah Yisrael. That's, that's the position of Agudah Yisrael now also. Ben Shapiro mentioned it. The Agudah wrote a letter. No, we're not out front. We're out of front, that's, that's too dangerous. That's not the thing to do at this time. But, yes, to explain what the opinion is, explain what the Jewish... Jewish law is, what the Jewish tradition is, what our, our, our Messiah is, and that's something that we are responsible to do and, and not allow the falsification of term. Uh, also, something you just mentioned, and Ben Shapiro mentioned it as well, um, is that, you know, like let's say Chuck Schumer, who happens to be Jewish, you have Bernie Sanders, there's many, you know, congressmen and uh, senators who are Jewish. Now, a lot of them, you know, sadly are not from, and they're even on the left, and they are, you know, pushing for abortion and, you know, many topics also going against the Torah. And then a lot of people who know that they're Jewish, they'll look at them and say, hey, here's, a, you know, a Jewish senator or a Jewish congressman that he's supporting abortion or whatever the case is. So doesn't, like, you need to also have, like, like you mentioned, you need to have the defense that, like, no, that's not the Jewish opinion. Like, here is the Jewish opinion. And, you know, something that he mentioned also not specifically in abortion, but in general, he was saying, like, why am I the only guy on television wearing a yarmulke? You know, like, we need more. It's not only, you know, to spread moral vows and be in front of the line, but kind of to defend those times that people are saying, oh, Jews, you know, agree with this or agree with that. So, like, what is kind of your take on not specifically on abortion, but uh, just in general, like on, you know, television and out in the news, you know, taking a further step than just, you know, publishing on the Agudas Israel website uh, about a certain topic. 
I think it's very dangerous. Um, uh, people out front and with yarmulkes, um, on the one hand, there's positive, and as long as they're doing the right thing and, the, and, the, and they're making the right positions and showing that the that the the um, uh, those liberal um, uh, who are who are going against Jewish law as Jews and and, and, and promoting the fact that they're, that they're Jews is uh, is is something that's uh, that's a, um, on the other hand there is the positive effect um, when they were considering. Um, having Joe Liebman, the candidate for vice president um, in the United States, uh, uh, they took a poll. And they took a poll, would you vote for a Jew? And something like 70 to 75% of the population in the United States said they would not vote for a Jew. Even as a vice president? Even as vice president. president. Right. Wow. They were hurt to but then they did a different, different question. Well, when you do the polls, it's always has to go, would you vote for a religious Jew? And 75 or 80% of the people said yes. Because unfortunately, because of some of the people out front, he says Jew means liberal. And if they didn't want to vote for a liberal, he says they, when they said a Jew, they assumed Jews are liberals. They're for abortion, they're for all the for other things that, 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 that so many people are against. But when they said, are you going for a religious Jew? A religious Jew is different. And that's an important thing to understand. And that's an important point to bring across. That Jews are not, Jews and liberal are not, not synonymous. That there is a Jewish community. There is a Ben Shapiro with a yarmulke who, 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 who has, has strong opinions about what's right and what's wrong. And it's based on the Messorah. It's based on, on what the Torah is. They said, so to that extent, it's, it's, it's advantageous. But it's also dangerous. And we've lived for thousands of years in Golis, and we've learned how to live in Golis. And in Golis, we know that we have to be careful how much out front we are, because um, the left hate us, the right hate us, right? The, is the, the, um, and, and the more we're out front, uh, the more dangerous it becomes. So it's, it's a big responsibility, and it has to be done well, and it has to be done carefully, and it should be done under the guidance of, of, of rabbinic leadership. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's funny you mentioned, because Ben Shapiro, I don't remember if it was 2017 or 2019, but he was um, the most hated uh, public figure also from the far left and also the most hated public figure from the far right, uh, which, I mean... That's, yeah. that, that's very typical, right? And, 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 and that's, that, that's why it's dangerous. Um, and, and if somebody disagrees with Ben Shapiro, then he hates all the Jews, right, right and left. And, and, and that's why it's a big responsibility and um, uh, it has to be handled very, very carefully. You, know, you should go listen to the Meaningful People uh, podcast episode of Ben Shapiro. It's really incredible. There he says that also, you know, on the topic of abortion, you know, like big topics like these, you know, he'll sit with uh, Rabbi Goldberg um, and, you know, discuss the exact uh, halachos to, you know, to see kind of what he does want to, you know, give out. Uh, you know, speak on his podcast, Moral Values. You know, he's speaking to millions of people a day. You know, he wants to get it down correct and, you know, spread right. the correct Torah values. Or so. Right. so it's really, really inspiring and incredible episode. I really recommend to listen to it. Is there any Gdali Yisrael, you know, over the years, and, you know, you mentioned that you sat in the meaning of Matzah's Gdali Torah and Rabbi Meisha Feinstein's house on this topic, and over the years in your, in, over your years in the Agudah, uh, were there any Gdali Yisrael that were m more leaning to like Ben Shapiro's side of it, that you should be more outgoing and upfront uh, about uh, topics? In my experience, there was Rov Gedol Yisrael, who had responsibility for the community, who were the Rosh Yeshiva, who were the heads of the community and so on. For the most part, that was their opinion. Um, there was one Gadol, uh, the Mashkiach in Chaim Berlin, the Rov of the, the Young Israel of Rugby, uh, Rabbi Vik de Miller, who was of the opinion that it was important for the Torah community to be upfront in moral issues, um, specifically on moral issues, and things like gay rights and abortions and these types of things, to the extent that there's no point you mentioned uh, Senator Schumer. Senator Schumer, 
on this issue, he's terrible. Are there other issues? He's great. So when you get into the voting booth, you have to decide in balance, take all the things, no, no politician agrees with us completely. And there are always issues that we disagree on. And the Gdali Yisrael have said that we have to look at the total and see on balance their advantages, disadvantages, he's good for us, he's bad for us, and which uh, politician or which, which uh, um, government opposition, senator, congressman, local, who is going to be better for the Jew total Jewish community. Included in that are the moral issues, but that's one of many factors that, that are taken into consideration. Rabbi Vigdon Miller disagreed. He said there's one issue, moral issues. Morality, if somebody helps out the yeshivas and he helps out Israel and he does everything he's good and he does tevis for people and so on, he does everything, but he's not good on the moral issues, then you have to be against him. Rav of the Gilead Yisrael disagreed. Um, and he was a, a, a chad b'mina, uh, those who, some of whose people who considered themselves disciples and continued on this, uh, on this path without rabbinic direction, without rabbinic leadership, the grandchildren of Rabbi Vigda Miller said, you know, they're off base. Rabbi Vigda Miller was one person who, who was, was able to make that decision and so on. But the, he had the people who, who said, say they're following in his, in his footsteps and, and, and really make, make problems and danger for, for, for the Jewish community. But the, um, the position of Agudis Yisrael, as, as directed by the Gedele Yisrael, was to take a look at the balance. Now, uh, for instance, I, I remember there was one year we honored Senator Ted Kennedy at Nagurda dinner. And um, Rabbi Sherry got a call the day after the dinner from a rov. I was, how can you honor Senator Ted Kennedy? He's immoral, he's a leftist, he's all, all the bad things. Um, and Rabbi Sherry said, look, you know, we take things in balance, although ultimately the Metz Kdeleotera had said we used to honor, we used to give an award to the politicians who used to come, we used to have a politician, it was important for, for our work in, in Stadlonis, and we used to give an award, so they said we shouldn't give an award. We should have it as a guest speaker, but we shouldn't honor them. So that, that was a little bit of sure. But um, two weeks after this rov called Rabbi Shera and complained about um, honoring Ted Kennedy, um, he called Rabbi Shera and said that he had a relative who was in a hospital in Boston and they needed medical attention and the hospital didn't want to take them in and uh, they was looking for Stadlund to try to get them in. And Rabbi Shera said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has a sense of humor. He says, and he called up Senator Ted Kennedy and said, Ted Kennedy was, was the one who was able to get the person into the, into, into the hospital. So, so when you're in the Stadlund's work and you're rep when you have responsibility for the community, I think responsibility is a key word. When you have responsibility for the community, you have to look at all the factors and all the considerations. And one of the considerations is morality or lagoyim, so, but there's also major factors of helping our community, protecting our community, having good relationship with the government. They shouldn't come that, shouldn't do the types of things they want to do in New, in New York with the, with, with, now with the, with the, the schools and, 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 and telling us how, how we have to teach and what types of t subjects we have to teach and so on and how to teach it. And he says, that's very, very dangerous. And it's only because of the relationship with politicians that we're going to be able to prevent it. Otherwise, we would, we would have fallen into a trap there. Yeah, there was just, I don't want to get to him, there just a side one. There was just in a Yeshiva University, there's just a court case that, you know, with the uh, LGBTQ and, and, you know, like crazy stuff that they said that they have to recognize it, all these clubs. And, you know, hopefully they'll, you know, go, you know, continue fighting it in court. Because Yeshiva University, in order to get government aid, became a secular school. They're not a religious school. So not being a religious school, they had no, they, they had no protection. That's one of the things that Agri Sisol works on in, in, in all of these issues is in all the laws that are against halacha, that there's a religious exemption. That a person who feels that a Catholic hospital should not have to have an abortion, even, even with Rover, and, 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 it was, and it was fine. It's not easy. But that's what we have to, that's the type of work that Agri Sisol is very, very active in and seeing to it that there's a religion, that we should be able to live as Orthodox Jews in the community, that we shouldn't, the government shouldn't tell us how to live or the things that we have to do, or that we have to go with the liberal ideas and, and, and teach it to our children or live it or, or, or experience it. That's an important factor. And that's the type of thing, or like going, yes, 
But number one is that we have to see to it that we can live as Orthodox Jews and live, and live in the community. And halacha is not only whether it's 40 days or 60 days when you can have an abortion, halacha is also in public policy when you speak out and when you're kind. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe. If you would like to help us spread the word, give this video a thumbs up and a five-star review. Also, don't forget to ask your friends to subscribe as well. If you would like to partner with us and sponsor an episode, send an email to info at jfoundations.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. We will see you in the next video.